Ready? Mm -hmm. All righty, so let's turn to page 145 in your grammar books. We're going to start there. 145. Oops, let me go out a little bit. Page 145. So it's a review week this week. Uh, which is nice. You already know about prepositions and prepositional phrases. And so we're going to start there. Um, it says a preposition starts a phrase that shows the relationship between a noun or a pronoun and another word in the sentence. Here's an example. The soldier fell into the moat. By the way, that moat you guys probably know is that water. It's like a little river around a castle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's usually for a layer of protection for the castle. And sometimes they put alligators in there. And so anyway, <clears throat> that is what a moat is. So into shows the relationship between soldier and moat. It shows where the soldier fell. So the soldier fell into the moat. So into the moat would be the prepositional phrase in that sentence. The next example says the soldier jumped over the moat. Over shows the relationship between the soldier and the moat. And it shows where the soldier jumped. So over the moat is the prepositional phrase. Now here it says, write a sentence with a prepositional phrase that shows the relationship between princess and bridge. Okay, before we do that, I want you to turn back in your book. It's going to be kind of far back, but you're going to go to page 43. It was a long time ago when we talked about prepositions. So this is page 43. And it says that we need to come up with a sentence about a princess and a bridge. And here are your list of prepositions down on the bottom of page 43. So looking at those words down here, how can you come up with a sentence using princess and bridge using one of these prepositions between the words princess and bridge? So we're coming up with a prepositional phrase. Delilah, did you think of one? Okay, go ahead, Delilah, and then I'll hear Alexis. The princess was by the bridge. The princess was by the bridge. Okay, that would work. B-Y is in here, right here. So that would work as a prepositional phrase. Good job, Delilah. Al Alexis. The princess was below the bridge. Say it one more time. The, the princess was below the bridge. The princess was below the bridge. Yep, that would work too, because that word below is right here. Wyatt, did you think of one? Using one of these prepositions here? The princess went on the bridge. Went on the bridge, yes. On is here. All right, so back to page 145. Go ahead and write the sentence you came up with. I'll write Delilah's, but you can write the one that you guys came up with. She said the princess was by the bridge, by the bridge. So you guys write your sentence that you came up with. Give me a thumbs up when you got your sentence down there. Okay, good. You guys got it, Delilah and Alexis? Okay, good. 
Now, the next part says answer these questions orally, but I will have you put a little note here. So it says, what is the prepositional phrase pattern? So that is, remember, we start with the preposition. So go ahead and write that in. Plus the noun. Remember, when we find the phrase, we start with a preposition, and then we draw a line under it until we get to a noun or a pronoun, and that's when the phrase stops. But I do want you to also add here, in parentheses, no verb. So a prepositional phrase does not have a verb, only the preposition and the noun. Okay, and then it says list five prepositions. Now we just looked at that page. That was page 43. And I know that you guys, Delilah came up with a word, the word by in her sentence. And then I think Wyatt, you said on, right? That was your preposition for your sentence. Yes. And then below, was that yours, Alexis? I think yours was below. Those are three, how about two more? What are two more prepositions? You can peek back on page 43. On to. On to, good. Beside. Beside, good. Now remember, there's a lot on that list, right? We only needed to list five, but that's where you go. If you're doing your homework this week and you forgot what the prepositions are, you can go back to that page 43 and that will help you remember. In fact, let's put underneath this page 43. And that way, looking back on our notes here, you can use that page for help if you need to. Down here, it says, think about it. Many words can be used as different parts of speech. However, a word can perform only one part of speech at a time. We've talked about this lots before. So basically, remember, sometimes words can be either a noun or an adjective or a verb, but they can't be more than one thing in the sentence, in, in one sentence. But here's an example. For example, the word since. Since can be a preposition that begins a prepositional phrase. If you were to look back on that page 43, you would find the word since in that list. But it says, and since can be a WWW word that begins an adverb clause. Remember www.asia.b, you guys remember that? Yeah, good, thank you, Delilah. So each letter stands for something like when, while, where, as, since, if, although, those are www.asia. And the S in Asia stands for since. So basically what they're telling you here is that word since can either be a prepositional phrase or an adverb clause, which is the www.asia. So that's an example of a word that can function two different ways, but only one way in each sentence, okay? But it's... That's what they're wanting you to think about today. And here it is, the example as a prepositional phrase. The princess has been sick since yesterday. So yesterday is the noun, since is the preposition. So that is a prepositional phrase. Since yesterday is a prepositional phrase, the pattern is the preposition since plus the noun yesterday, there's no verb in there. Here's an adverb clause. The princess has been sick, sick since she ate the apples. Since she ate the apples is an adverb clause. It has, here's the pattern. It has the WWW word since plus the subject, which is she plus the verb ate. So here's the difference. Prepositional phrases do not have a verb, but an adverb clause does, okay? That's the difference, but both of them could have the word since in it. 
Do you guys have any questions about this page that we just did? If not, you can just shake your head no. No, okay, good. Let's go ahead and turn the page to our practice page then. And that's gonna be page 147. All right, let's see, Delilah, can you read our sentence for us today? Sure. It grew and grew to, wait, it grew and grew to the floor, out the window and over the last lawn. Okay, that is a weird sentence, huh? It grew and grew to the floor. Yeah. That's weird, but, but right before that, Oh, in your homework last week, the last one says, while she greedily devoured 12 apples, her nose felt funny. So it's her nose that's growing. Oh, yeah. Out the window and over the lush lawn. Oh, boy. Kind of sounds like another story I know about, like, Pinocchio, huh? His nose was growing. <laughs> that's, only when you, that's only when he lies. Yes, only when he lies. So it must be different for her. Is she lying or is she, what is she doing? Maybe she has a, maybe she's allergic to the apples. Yeah, it sounds like it was because of the apples that she ate. 35 yeah. apples, that's a lot. So. 12 apples is a lot. There's no way I could do that. <laughs> I know some people can. Not me. They I freaking think. eat like 190 torkies. <laughs> All actually, right. somebody actually did do that. The vocabulary word today is lush. You know what lush means? What is lush? Beautiful. Alexis, Alexis what is lush? Uh, it's a beautiful green lush grass. Yes, yeah, so lots of green, maybe yeah, covered with green leaves. You're right, good. So lush just means very, very green. Hi, Chase. Okay, we're on page 147. We just started our uh, practice page here. All right, and your articles, you know, to write in right here and then go ahead and find them. There's three of them. And they're all the this time. That makes it pretty easy. Pretty much they're always all the. Pretty much. Okay, so Wyatt, how about nouns? Where are the nouns in this sentence? Uh, grew. No, that would be a verb. That's like an action. Okay, then it has to be floor and yes. window. Floor, window, and there's one more. Lawn. Good. So those are person, place, or things. Each one of those are things. So good job, Wyatt. A uh, pronoun, Delilah, where is the pronoun? Remember, that takes the place of a noun. Um, I think it. Yes, good. So usually if you're talking about a person, it's he or she. But since we're talking about her nose, that's a thing, right? So we use it yeah. for that pronoun. Since that was pretty short, Delilah, how about you help us find the adjective too? Okay, um, lush. Good, yes. So lush describes the lawn. Very good. So that is the adjective. Nice. Okay, Alexis, we need two coordinating conjunctions. But before you tell us what they are, do you remember the acronym for that, for the coordinating conjunctions, Alexis? Sorry, you broke up. Can you say that again? Yeah. Um, do you remember the acronym? the word that we use to help us remember coordinating conjunctions. I don't remember it. Does anybody else remember it? No? Coordinating conjunctions? Yes, what's the acronym the we use? Wash lawn to the floor? No, no, okay. I want everybody to write this down. The word is fan boys. Fan boys. There you go. I thought, I thought I was talking about the prepositional. No. I know it, I know it is boy something. Yeah. 
So this is to help you remember what those words are. Remember, it's for and nor, but, or, or yeah. Yeah. so yeah. all those words. Yeah. Okay. Sore. okay, so Alexis, back to you. What are the two coordinating conjunctions in this sentence? And. and, good. And then we also have and here. So the A in fanboys stands for and. Good job, Alexis. But this is what I was wanting you to remember, the fanboys. So anytime you're looking for a coordinating conjunction, think about that acronym. This is called an acronym. It basically means that each letter stands for a word. And it's supposed to be a little trick to help you remember what those words are for coordinating conjunctions. I knew it was boy something. <laughs> okay, so you were close. Fanboys, okay. Um, my mom had it on our screen door window on the window for like a long time. Oh, well, you should remember then. That's a good spot to have it. Maybe you need to put it back on there to help you remember. <laughs> okay, you got that. Now let's see, Wyatt, what about the prepositional phrases? There's three of them. Two. What's the whole phrase? You're right. To the floor. Good. To the floor is one. Over the lush lawn. Good. That's the other one. There's one more. Hmm. Out the window. Yes. Very good, Wyatt. You nailed it. Good job. And a little trick I told you guys before, if you get stuck on that, skip that and do the subject verb pairs and then come back to prepositional phrases. That'll help you find them. All right. So Chase, I need you to tell me what the verbs are. There's two of them in this sentence. Uh, the verbs are, um, there is, let me think. Uh, grew, grew, grew and, and grew and grew, <laughs> both grews. You're right, Chase. And then Chase, what is the subject of that sentence? What was it that it, grew? And grew? It's yes. the subject. It is the subject. Excellent. Very good, Chase. It grew and grew. And it is the pronoun that's talking about her nose. It grew and grew to the floor. That's kind of crazy. How's she going to walk around? Her nose is going to get in the way. And over the lush lawn. Oh, boy. So I'm anxious to see what happens in this, this week in your homework assignment. Okay, we need a capital. That's going to be easy right there. And then your end mark is still going to be a period. All right, we're done with the practice. So go ahead and write the sentence down below. I will. I don't need your help. Oh, I don't really. Oh, I'm not mute. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, did you say something? Oh, you're done. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and rewrite it here, Delilah. That's what you're working on. When you're finished, give me a thumbs up and we'll go on to the next thing here. Good, I see that, I see that, Wyatt, good job. Chase, are you still working? Okay, I'll give you another minute here. Okay, Chase, are you done? Oh, okay. Keep working on it, Chase. I'm going to have the rest of you guys, we're going to get out 
the next section in your binders. So we're still working on the desert reptiles. Okay, I see that, Chase. Good job. Um, we're still working on desert reptiles. You guys are going to finish that report this week um, in your homework, but we're in class today. We're going to move on to the next week to get ready for the next thing after the desert reptiles. So keep the desert reptiles week, which is week 10, in the front of your binder because you're working on that. And you're going to get out week 11. So go ahead and turn to that first tab, which is source text right here, this first tab. And oops, hold on a second. You should get out. Are we going to freaking Antarctica? So we're going to do, I want you to get out page 91. This one says week 11, Antarctica. Yes, is what it's called. So you're going to get out this one, which is page 91. And then you're going to get out this one, which is called Antarctica. That one is page 93. And the checklist that says Antarctica week 11, that's 95. So just those three pages. Why is the next one we're doing literally a game? It's Marco oh. Polo for the next one. Well, we'll have to wait to find out on that one. So just get out those three pages, 91, 93, and 95. Okay. I don't have 91. Okay. I think we might have moved it to a different section, but if you don't have it, that's okay. Cause we don't really use that one anyway. You definitely yeah. need this one, Antarctica, and you definitely need this one, the checklist. Okay. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to go over some things with you. You don't have to write these down. You can just watch me on the screen here, okay? So don't, don't worry about writing this down. Just watch me. All right. So we've been talking about doing a report. And you guys have been working pretty hard on the desert reptiles. Whoops, trying to focus here. There we go. Um, and remember how we talked about how you have a subject, right? So the subject, just watch me. You don't have to write this, okay? So the subject was desert reptiles. Remember that? You guys are still working on that one. And then the topics. What were the three topics you wrote about with desert reptiles? Do you remember the three topics? What was the first one, Alexis? Go ahead, Alexis. Um, I'm having a hard time talking and dealing with the cold. Oh, I'm sorry. Your, is your throat bad today? Yeah. That's okay, you don't have to talk, it's okay. You guys remember the first topic was Sahara Sand Viper. Remember that one? That was the first topic. What was the second topic? Do you remember, Wyatt? Mojave Rattlesnake. There you go, Mojave Rattlesnake. And then what's the third one? You guys remember the last one? Gray Monitor. There you go, Gray's Monitor. And this last week you did the keyword outline for Gray's Monitor. Well, for your homework this week, you're gonna do the paragraph for Gray's Monitor, okay? But what if, um, what if we wanted to come up with a topic or a subject actually? What if we did the subject I'm going to do another chart here. You don't have to write this. You can just watch me. 
what if I wanted you to write about cats? And I know Delilah has a cat. It sounds like Wyatt has a cat. Anybody else? You have a cat too? Alexa? I have three, no, two cats. Okay, perfect. Everybody in class has cats. So that's going to be easy. All right. What if I wanted to write about cats? What are some things, what are some topics that we could write about cats? What are some things you know about cats? They like catnip. Catnip, okay. That's what they eat. It's like a treat, right? They like that stuff. No, it just makes them like very, 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 very happy and stuff. Do they eat it or they just smell it? They just like smell it and then they ju it just gets them very happy. <laughs> what else do you know about cats? Delilah, oh. what do you know about cats? I thought catnip was like a treat. So catnip is like drugs for cats. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Makes them hyper, it sounds like. Delilah, what do you know about cats? What's it uh, all the uh, um, what I know about cats is sometimes they're ornery. Okay, so we could put behavior. Sometimes they're ornery, especially your your little cat there. She sounds like she's she's been adult. born like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know they're fuzzy, right? Mm -hmm. And they like to and they like to catch um birds. Catch birds. That's good. What else do you know about cats? There's different breeds, right? Different um, colors and breeds. Um, they have ears. They have ears? We could write about their ears, how they hear. About what they see. Okay, what they see. Because cats can actually pretty much see in the dark. Oh. Didn't know that. I'll put C in the dark. That's kind of cool. Okay, so there's lots more. We could keep going on this, but we'll stop right here. But you get the idea. We could do a research paper on cats. That's the big subject. That's the big idea. That's, that's what the main thing that you're writing about. But then your topics can be lots of different things, right? About cats. And remember up here, we made these our Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three. So those are the parts of your keyword outline that you came up with details underneath the topics to tell more about those topics. And you could do that here with these. We're not gonna write about cats this time, but just so you see the example here, the big subject is the broad thing you're talking about. And then the topics are specific things underneath that to tell you know more details about the cats okay um it got me thinking about a cat in the, the desert it's called a sand cat oh okay so that would be a they don't leave any movie. footprints okay all right so this time what i want you to do is now you get out a clean piece of lined paper and i am going to have you write this next part down okay So first things first, you got to put your name and date at the upper left-hand corner like you always do. Today is March 21st, 2023. Go ahead and label your paper like that. I'm getting kind of excited for a movie that's coming out soon in April. Maybe at the end you could tell us what it is. Right now we got to focus on this. Though. Okay. Anyway, thank you, though. Remind me, because I want to know. Okay, so we got your name and date. You're going to skip a line, and you already noticed, because Wyatt actually pointed it out, it's Antarctica is what we're going to write about. We're doing another report, okay? This is like a little report on some actual facts about Antarctica. And underneath that, I'm going to have you put K-W-O for, you know what that stands for. What does that stand for again? Keyword outline. Yes, good. I told you, we're going to be doing a lot of these keyword outlines. That's really the core of everything we're learning in this class. Okay. Now, 
Go ahead and skip a line. We are going to write a three paragraph report about Antarctica. We've always been kind of focusing on three paragraphs. So what I'm gonna have you do is skip a line, go ahead and write Roman numeral one, and then I'm gonna have you write down five. One, two, three, four, five, and then that word clincher. We always write clincher there from now on to remind you that you need to have a topic clincher sentence for each of your paragraphs. And we will be talking about that again as we go through this next thing. We're gonna write a report about Antarctica. So Antarctica is the subject. The subject is that broad topic. Now, you know Antarctica is a continent, right? And it's pretty big. And there's some interesting animals and climate and things about Antarctica. Those would be the topics. Okay, Delilah, is that really important for me to see? Or are you are you just playing around? Okay, I need you to just listen. Did you write this down already? Okay, good. So what I want you to do now is skip a line and you're gonna do the same thing for Roman numeral two and you're gonna go one through five and write that word clincher and then skip a line and do the same thing for Roman numeral three. And then write that word clincher. I'll give you a minute to catch up there. So your keyword outline should look just like that. one through five under each Roman numeral. Okay, good, I see that thumbs up, Wyatt. Okay, and then just so we can remember, in the margin, I want you to put that word topic right here next to Roman numeral one, put it next to Roman numeral two, and put it next to Roman numeral three. Topic, topic, topic. So you can see the topic and clincher. The topic is that first one, the Roman numeral, and then the clincher is at the end. Okay. Now, remember when you wrote about, and you're still working on it, the, the desert reptiles, they were all reptiles, right? All, all three of those things were reptiles that you wrote about. Reptile, the desert reptiles was your big subject. And then you had those three, the Sahara sand viper, the Mojave rattlesnake, and the Gary's monitor. Those were your three topics. Now we're talking about Antarctica, and there are going to be three topics that you choose about Antarctica, but they're all going to be part of Antarctica. So what I want you to write here next to Roman numeral one is Antarctica, and I want you to write it here too. And, oops, I spelled that wrong. Hold on. Ant Antarctica, Antarctica, and then you can write commas right after each one of those, because remember, our rules are still the same, that we're going to have three words maximum for your outline, but you can still use numbers and symbols and abbreviations for free. But just to show you, that each one of these is going to be about Antarctica and a topic that relates to Antarctica. So that's where each one of these are gonna be slightly different. Okay, now that we have our keyword outline set up, it's ready to go. Now we're gonna switch over to the actual article about Antarctica. So let's look at that. That's gonna be on page 93. And I want you to notice something here because last time when you guys wrote about the desert reptiles, 
Remember how you had three articles. You had a whole article about sand vipers. And then you had a whole article about Mojave rattlesnakes. And then you had a whole article about the Gray's monitor. This one is just one big article. You'll notice it goes on on the back. It's a full back page too. But that's all you have is just this one article for your report. You don't have three like you had before. Okay, so you're gonna find your own topics within this one article, okay? It's all about Antarctica, but there's gonna be different topics in this article. And then there's a bunch of facts. Remember the facts, go here. These are the facts about whatever the topic is that you're writing about. So what I'm going to do is we're going to read one paragraph at a time on this article, and then we're going to label in the margin what the paragraph is about. And guess what? That's going to be a possible topic for you. Okay. So I'm going to start reading, and then we'll just talk about each paragraph. I'm on page 93, this article is called Antarctica. Antarctica is a continent of extreme cold, twice as big as Australia. It is the fifth largest of the Earth's continents. Antarctica is almost completely covered by snow and ice. However, it is actually a desert with less than four inches of rain or snow each year. It is, in fact, the largest desert in the world. Atop the land, snow has piled up over the centuries, forming thick ice sheets, huge glaciers, and towering icebergs. In many places, the continent is covered with ice over a mile or 1.6 kilometers thick. Scientists estimate that over 90% of all the ice on earth is found in Antarctica. Due to warmer air and ocean temperatures, some scientists are concerned that Antarctica's snow and ice might melt. If all the ice in Antarctica were to melt, the sea levels would rise around 200 feet or 60 meters. Okay, if that happened, I mean, they're talking about like over a long period of time, all of those coastal cities that we know even in California would be covered in water, right? That's, that's a lot of water. All right, so in that paragraph, what did it mostly talk about? Can you guys brainstorm a little bit? Just looking at that first paragraph, what was it mostly about? About Antarctica. <laughs> well, yeah, but what about Antarctica, though? Uh, that's about the ice snow and snow that could um, it melt. Okay, good. So it did talk about the cold temperatures, and it talked about ice and snow and icebergs, it talked about glaciers, it talked about, um, and then the oceans. So I would say most of this paragraph is about the ice, right? So what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna draw a line with your pencil or your pen, whatever you're using, down the side of this paragraph. You're gonna stop at the bottom of that paragraph right here. See how it indents here? That means this is the next paragraph. And then next to this, I want you to write the word ice. And that's just a little note in the margin to tell you this whole paragraph is basically about the ice in Antarctica. Okay, good. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the next paragraph. This is the paragraph here, I'm gonna read it. And then you're gonna decide what is this paragraph mostly about? Now it's, it's all gonna be about Antarctica. So we already know that, but we're looking for topics. Remember those are a little more information about the subject Antarctica. So that's what we're focusing on. Okay, so it says the coldest temperature 
ever recorded on Earth was taken there in 1983 near the South Pole. One negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the same thing as negative 89.2 degrees Celsius. And just really quick, the difference between Fahrenheit and Celsius, it is really just how you measure the temperature. In America, we use Fahrenheit. That's the F. That stands for Fahrenheit. In places like Canada, they use Celsius. Other countries use Celsius as their way of measuring temperature. So it's basically just showing you both. But negative 128, I mean, I live in Tehachapi and it gets pretty cold up here. I would say the coldest I remember so far living here was 12 degrees. I remember there was one night it got down to 12 degrees, which is like crazy cold for us California people because- Cal When I went to Mammoth, it was eight degrees. Okay, so you know. All right, so that's cold. Now, once you get down to zero degrees, it can get colder than that even. And that's when it goes down into the negative numbers. So if you've learned in math, maybe some of you already know the number line, you've got zero in the middle. And then on the right side is all of the positive numbers. And on the left side, it turns into negative numbers. Thumbs up if you know what I'm talking about for math. Have you guys studied that yet? Good. Negative. That's like crazy cold. And then to think about negative 128.6, I can't even imagine. Well, honestly, your the the everything freezes, like even the snot in your nose and the the moisture around your eyes, everything freezes. Alexis. <clears throat> Yeah, in Minnesota, my cousin, most of everyone on my mom's side lives in Minnesota, and um, it gets like negative 40. Oh, man. So they know. They know what cold is like. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. You can't even really, you got to have like a ski mask on, you're covering your face and everything. Wyatt, did you want to say something about that too? Okay. In Antarctica, one person spent there for 50 hours. Um, it, you need like gloves for your gloves, gloves yeah. for the glove gloves, ja <laughs> a jacket for your jacket, <laughs> jacket for your jacket. I agree. It's that cold. Like 50 totally pants. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so let me keep going in this paragraph here. It says, when blizzards occur, they usually do not bring new snowfall. They are caused by powerful winds over 100 miles per hour at times that blast old snow off mountain peaks. Winter and summer at the poles are both six months long. There is no spring or fall. Okay, so what is this paragraph mostly about, would you say? What is the kind of the common temperatures? Thing? Temperatures, good. Temperatures, or another way to say it would be weather, right? So I'm going to draw a line here and leave a little gap there because this is for the next paragraph. And let's put weather. So this paragraph was mostly about ice. This one is mostly about the weather or the temperature, like, like Wyatt said. That's true. That's part of it. So what we're doing is just taking notes in the margin about what these paragraphs are about. Now let's go ahead and turn to the back page, the back side. And here's a new paragraph. I'm gonna read this one and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna decide what the main part of this paragraph is, what are the facts that they're talking about. We're looking for topics, okay? So in this paragraph, I'm going to read it. You be thinking about what it's mostly about. Delilah, if you can, go ahead and turn your camera back on so I can see you. So I know you're with us, okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and read, and then we'll talk about it. In these extreme conditions, few plants or animals can survive. There are numerous species of mosses and liverworts. Liverworts. 
but only two species of flowering plants, which grow in the summer and disappear at the beginning of winter. In or near the coastal waters, seabirds, such as king penguins, emperor penguins, and snow petrels have adapted to the harsh climate. Seals and whales are the only mammals found in Antarctica. Searching for food during the summer months, they escape the severe winds while swimming in the ocean. At the end of summer, they migrate north to warmer regions and return again only when summer approaches. That's kind okay. of funny since Antar they say that Antarctica, the coldest place on Earth, is warmer than like it in the winter than like a tropical area. <laughs> it's crazy. I agree. It is crazy to think about. So what is that paragraph mostly about, would you say? Somebody different than Wyatt. I know you've answered the last two ones. So how about Chase? What What is that paragraph mostly about? Say it again. What is this paragraph that we just read? What is it mostly about? What would you say the topic is in that paragraph? Let me I just read it. What is it talking mostly about? It's about the life. Good. That's good, Chase, because it's talking about plants and animals, right? But that was a good way to put it, the life, because that involves both plants and animals. So you're going to draw your line again down the side like this, just for that paragraph, and write the word life. So that paragraph is talking about the life on Antarctica, both plants and animals. Good, Chase. Okay. I'm going to read the next one. And Delilah, I'm going to have you tell me what this next paragraph is about. So I'm going to read it. And then you tell me what you think it's mostly about. <clears throat> Antarctica was first sighted in 1820 and probably first touched by Captain John Davis, a sealer, who claimed to have set foot on the ice in 1821. Over the next 100 years, or the next 100 years, there were many expeditions to explore the continent, some of which resulted in serious injury and death. In 1902, the crew of the Scottish National Antarctic Expedition erected the first building out of rocks. Racing with Englishmen, Robert Scott, Norwegian Roald Am Amundsen, and his team reached the South Pole in 1911. Today, there are about 70 permanent research stations visited by scientists from over 30 different nations that have signed the Antarctic Treaty. During the summertime, the population of researchers and tourists can reach 4,000 to 5,000 people. Okay, what do you think, Delilah? What is that paragraph mostly talking about? It's pretty much talking about like food and Antarctica and escapement and winds and oceans and summers. And we're talking about this one right here, this last paragraph. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this is the one I just read, so this one. Okay. So it's about Antarctica and some people that used to work, like, probably touched the first one. And Right, the people who discovered it, right? Yeah. And what else? And it's talking about people's team that okay. reached the South Pole. Good. You're right. Talking about the scientists that reached the South Pole and then other scientists that come and do research. Good, Delilah. So I want you to draw a line down here for this paragraph, and we're going to put the word people. That was good, Delilah. It's exactly what it's about, people. Yeah. People who discovered it, people who've been doing research on it, people who are visiting it. So basically the people who come to Antarctica. 
Okay. Now, what I want you to do next is go back to your keyword outline that we did right here. And I actually want you to turn this over, turn your page over to the back side of your outline. This is the back of your outline, okay? I need to get a new. Hold on a second, I gotta get a new paper here. We're almost done. New piece of plastic, there we go. On the back, of this, I want you to write uh, go ahead and put Antarctica at the top. And that's the subject, right? So you can put subject over here. And then draw a line down like that. And then I want you to write topics here. We're almost done. I know we're running out of time, but I want you to get this down on your page here. Now, looking at those paragraphs that we just read, what was the first paragraph about again? What was the first paragraph about? Ice. Ice. So go ahead and write ice. So Mike can do the next one. Yeah. Um, Alexis, what's the second paragraph about? Second paragraph uh, was about really but it was about the weather. Yes, the weather. Good. All right. And Chase, what was the third paragraph about? On the back of this of the article. Chase, what was the third paragraph about? Oh, uh, like exploring. Uh, no, this is the third oh, paragraph. Life. There we go. Life. Good. So let's write life. And then Delilah, what was the last paragraph about again? Paragraph four. You're still muted. Okay, so it was pretty much about like how the earth. Now, right here, the note that we put right here, what word is that? People. There you go, people. So we were talking about for a second, I didn't know what you were talking about. Okay, Sorry. so these are each of the four paragraphs basically. So your subject is Antarctica, we already decided that, but here are four possible topics of what you're gonna write about. Now, looking back on the front of your outline, we're only going to choose three things to write about, but we have four choices. So we're gonna leave that right there and come back to this next week and continue working on our outline next week. So let me talk to you for a minute about your homework this week. Now, your homework this week is going to be to finish your desert reptiles report. Remember this last week you finished your keyword outline for the Gray's monitor. And so this week you're going to write your paragraph about Gray's monitor. Okay, so let me share that with you really quick. We worked on this in class last week. Remember this, this is going back to desert reptiles. So you already finished that outline for Sahara sand viper. You already wrote that paragraph. And then you added to under that paragraph in your report, your paragraph two was about the Mojave rattlesnake. That's what you worked on last week, at, last week okay? For this week, you're gonna write paragraph three called the Gray's Monitor. You're gonna write about that reptile. So after you're done with this last paragraph, you'll have three paragraphs about desert reptiles. So your homework this week is to write one more paragraph. This is paragraph three of your report 
about desert reptiles, you're gonna use your keyword outline here from Gray's Monitor and write your third paragraph. We're just gonna wait on Antarctica until next week. So your homework will still be this. Any questions about what your homework is this week? Okay. So you're still gonna do your grammar and your grammar pages are pages 148 to 150. And then you're gonna write this paragraph, the last paragraph of your, of your report on desert reptiles. Don't forget to use your checklist for desert reptiles. Don't forget to use this. You have all of these dress ups to include in each paragraph. So now you'll be able to finish this checklist. LY adverb, who, which clause, strong verb, and because clause. And then watch out for those band words. And don't forget another thing, your topic clincher sentences. That's part of your checklist. So make sure to use this when you write your last paragraph. Okay, any questions about what you're doing this week? No questions? Good, okay, that's it for today, you guys. Bye. Bye. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.